Hey guys, good afternoon and welcome to the 330 Sports Show. Today is Thursday, September 23rd, 2021. We are live from Youngstown Studio and I'm your host, Justin Coffin. Uh, we're trying a little bit different format today. We're going with a 3.30 start time. So I appreciate you guys all tuning in. Uh, we are going to bring in our guest here in just a minute. Uh, I'm going to tell you about her. Uh, I also want to tell you a little bit about the format of today's show. So uh, our usual Thursday shows, we get uh, a lot into what's coming up with the high school football uh, coming up this weekend with Steve Leslie. We will also look into the Browns, the AFC North. We will also look into uh, the Buckeyes and a little bit of college football. And we usually have a Thursday thought segment, but this week we have a special guest that is joining us. Her name is Jennifer Archuleta. Uh, you guys might remember her as Jennifer Walcott. Uh, she... I could go through a whole list of titles with her. Uh, so I'm going to just give you a brief description uh, of uh, some of the hats she wears and, and let her fill in the gaps. So she is a wife, a mother, an actress, a chairperson for childhelp.org, uh, a court appointed special advocate. She is a model. And most of you probably would remember her as the play, uh, Playboy Playmate of the Month, I believe it was in August of 2001. So I will have her uh, give you all the details. We're going to bring her on the show now. So uh, Jennifer, welcome. Thanks for joining us. How are you doing? Good. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. We appreciate appreciate you joining us. Uh, you're a couple hours behind. You're uh, on the West Coast time out there. So thanks for uh, taking time out of your day. Uh, did you hear my description? Uh, did I miss any? Uh, did I miss any of your roles there? No, I think you 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 had them all. I also am an animal. Very, very good. Oh, go ahead. No, no, no. Go. You're fine. I didn't mean to cut you off. Um, Joe, can we turn her volume up? Okay. Jen, we're just working on our audio on our end so I can hear you a little bit better. But um, let me let me just, first of all, you know, I was introduced to you through your cousin, Jesse. We'll talk about her a little bit at the end in your relationship with her. But um, again, going through that list, wife, mom, actress, chairperson, uh, CASA, advocate, a model, a playboy bunny. That is an exhausting list just going through that. So take us through a typical day in your life and how you get through it all. You know, I ask myself that sometimes, uh, you know, just <laughs> at all. And, uh, you know, I've always wanted to do it all. And I'm a very busy person by nature. And so, you know, I, I just have to really just be very organized and you have to where, you know, just what's most important and you just have to fit it all in. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, that's awesome. You do a great job with it. And, uh, you know, so one thing I want to get into, you can probably see my sweatshirt, Youngstown, Ohio. Uh, one of the big reasons we wanted to bring you in, you are from here, right here in Youngstown. Uh, so tell us a little bit about uh, growing up here, what you remember, some of the, you know, some of the good stuff, some of the positives you remember from growing up here in Youngstown. Well, I remember Idora Park. I remember loved going to Idora Park. Park. Uh, Mill Creek Park, was amazing. Creek Park. Mosquito Lake, we often would go on Mosquito Mosquito Lake, Mosquito Lake, Mosquito Lake, Mosquito Lake, Mosquito Lake. my uncle and ski and tube and things like that. And overall, it's just really good people, down to earth people. Uh, people love football there. And um, it was a great place to grow up. I didn't care for the weather. Uh, sometimes it felt like yeah. uh, I heard it's really cold there today. By the way, uh, it is. It's about sixty degrees today. Yeah. <laughs> it, it just it started to feel small at a very even when yeah, it felt like a very small town. Everybody knew everybody. Everybody. Good. And things like that. So those are like the negatives of everybody kind of knows. Everybody kind of knows. Okay. All right. Very good. Very good. So, um, so how long, how long did you live here? And when did you kind of tell us that story of like, you know, how were you here through high school? When did you move out West? You know, things like that. Yeah. I mean, I was there all through high school. I was there all through high school. A lot of people think I'm from Lowville, Ohio, but I'm from Youngstown. 
Uh, I was an open enrollment student at Lowville High School, and uh, that was new back then. And I want to, there wasn't a big welcome mat when I arrived at Lowville. Although I think uh, throughout the years, there was only two years there, but people warmed up a little bit. Um, I was about 17, 18 years old when I decided I was going to move out west. I was working two jobs at the time, Papa John and 579. Uh, I was very proud of 579. I loved working at the mall. A lot of drama. <laughs> it was just a lot. Of <laughs> um, and, you know, I saved up as much as I could. And I lied to my parents and I told them I had a job. And I was dating a guy at that point who had moved out there himself and said that, hey, come on out if you want to um, come out and just visit. And I drove my little purple Dodge Shadow convertible across country and, uh, you know, left the bad weather and small town behind. <laughs> Big dreams. That's awesome. That's awesome. So you did drive cross country. Yes. To and get I there. Yeah. Um, it was kind of funny because I was going through the Rocky Mountains and I remember my little dog shadow. It was incredible. It was like snow. It was wind. It was every kind of weather imaginable. And then all of a sudden I hit a boulder and it basically takes off the bottom of my car. And I was like Fred Flintstone oh, just trying to make it to Colorado. And um, my aunt was there thankfully. And I was able to get my car repaired with the little bit of money I did go out there with. And then uh, throughout my journey, we would camp. And a lot of times we couldn't afford to camp. So it was only 10 bucks. We would camp, not pay to camp. So it was like, it wasn't very glamorous driving across country, but it was very beautiful. And I'm glad I said, you know, did it and I'm done. I don't think I'll be doing it again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I agree. Um, but that, yeah, that sounds like a fun trip. So you make your way out to LA and you know, you get discovered somehow. Tell us how you got discovered and, and what that kind of led to. Well, you know, everybody thinks I was, you know, in Hollywood trying to become a movie star or whatever it was. I really was going out there just for a change of scenery. I just love the weather. I love the ocean. And um, I was working as a, a freelance makeup artist on the movie sets. And um, I was working at Fred Siegel's, which at that time, a lot of uh, people shopped there. You'd always see it in all the People magazines and things like that. It was really fun, fun times. And then I got into a bit of trouble and I was in a really um, bad place in my life where it could have went either way. And uh, I got a job at the Playboy Mansion doing makeup because I was really struggling and I needed the money. And uh, I thought, you know what, I'm going to do the makeup here and I'm going to sneak down to the party because they told us you can work here, but you can't attend the party and you have to leave after your work is done. And I thought, you know what, I am going to go to this party and I don't care. And I just assumed all Hef's uh, parties were lingerie. So I brought like this really cute lingerie outfit and I um, waltzed down the steps and nobody was in lingerie. So it was like being caught literally in public in your underwear. <laughs> People were staring and they thought like maybe I was some kind of like Valentine's surprise because it was like in honor of Kylie Bax, who was a supermodel. Everybody was like in jeans and T-shirts. You know how those supermodels, they roll uh, very casual. So anyways, Hef ended up asking me um, to come over to his table and he asked who I was. And I thought, oh, my gosh, I'm going to get kicked out by the man himself. And he, uh, I, he said, who are you? And I looked at him and drinks and I said who are you and he started laughing that you should test to become a playboy playmate and so I just didn't think about it and then his security took my number and his daughter called me a couple of days later and we started the process and it really it really changed my life I mean I had instant friends instant fame and instant money and you know um later on maybe we could talk about it but I'm writing a book and you know, those were very dark times um, for me. And it was divine intervention, to say the least. Hugh Hefner was my guardian angel, silly as some people may may think of that. But he was definitely my angel. That's great. What a cool story. And uh, like you said, getting caught in your underwear and then getting discovered and becoming, uh, you know, world famous from there. That's so, so cool. Um, so. Tell us about him. Let's, you know, I, I think we all kind of uh, have heard, 
you know, about Hugh Hefner. I think most of us probably know who he is. Maybe a, a younger crowd might not be as familiar, but tell us about him as a person and, you know, the kind of guy he was and, and, and maybe any funny stories you might have from him. Uh, Hef was just like such a stand-up guy. He was a class act. He did so much. Uh, people don't understand like just what he has done as far as like uh, having the first, um, I mean, he started the jazz festival, things like that. He um, he was a big advocate of uh, women's rights and um, so many things. And he was just so kind to me and my family. My my dad has been to the mansion, my mom, my brother-in-law, my sister, my kids, my husband. I remember um, when I was going back to Youngstown, Ohio, I really wanted my diamond bunny necklace because they give that to you once you're the playmate of the month. And he had so much stuff going on and uh, he always would write down things that were important to you or important to him. And it was fun in the sun Sunday at the Playboy Mansion. And I just, I kept seeing him in passing. He was very busy getting ready for a big trip. And I had asked him the week before if I could have my bunny necklace, even though my centerfold didn't come out. And uh, he came up to me, no questions asked. And he took out his pad and he checked it off he gave me my bunny necklace. And uh, another cute story is when my father was there at the mansion, um, I think that one of the butlers asked my dad if he would like a drink and uh, have got my dad a drink himself. He was just such a gentleman. Oh, cool. Very cool. So let me ask this. Um, you know, I am now a, a dad. I have a two-year-old daughter. How does your dad feel or how did he feel at the time about you possibly doing Playboy at the time before you maybe, you know, posed or, you know, did your shots? How did, how did your dad feel about that in general? You know, this is such a hard question because I think the reality of it is, is back then, um, that kind of fame was so different than now. I mean, you can go on Instagram right now and you could see so much more and you're not even part of history. Yeah. You know, say I was, you sure. know, likely of, uh, you know, Marilyn Monroe and Cindy Crawford and Elle McPherson and even Madonna. So, you know, with that being said, I think uh, it was such a professional um, experience. Even when I did my centerfold, it was, you know, a couple months of shooting and every day it was like another day in the office. You didn't really think about what exactly you were doing. You were thinking about the history of the magazine and who it was and all that stuff. Not that like mm -hmm. this nude, sexy magazine. And so I don't think my dad looked at it like that either. And plus I had been on my own for so long, nobody was gonna tell me, yeah. even if he didn't like it, what I could or <laughs> what they wanted me to do. They were always very supportive and um, my biggest cheerleaders. And um, you know, that's what any kid could want, right? You just, you don't want any judgment. You want Absolutely. the guy, but at that time in my life, it was it was the right move to make. That's that's great. And and from what I understand, you know, not being a uh, an aficionado of the magazine, you know, people buy it for the articles, too. Right. Yeah, <laughs> that's what I understand. And you know what? Unfortunately, <laughs> I say this. Unfortunately, when I became a Playboy Playmate, I should have had six pictures that would have been in a magazine stuffed under somebody's mattress years later, you know, but the internet started booming then and people start to steal photos and they start to, uh, you're, you, you have thousands and, you know, they take so many photos and then they're stolen and they're all over the internet now. So it's unfortunate that it's not wow. like seven day, the seven picture spread that I thought of when I became a Playboy Playmate. You have to understand in 2001, that's when the dot coms and everything were just exploding. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. That's a good point. And like you said, uh, from the sounds of it and taking your word firsthand, it's very professional. It's very well done. It's very classy. And uh, so let me ask this question as someone who would never be comfortable, you know, in that situation. Uh, how does one, obviously you're, you're very attractive, you're very beautiful, but how does one get the confidence to do something like that? You know, I've always been comfortable with my body and my my mo motto is everybody gets naked at the end of the day. Some people just look good enough to put it in print. We all see our bodies at the end of the day. You know, it, if you've ever sure. been to Arts or anywhere in Europe, people are topless on the beach. They're barely wearing anything. 
you know, to me, like I said, I was just comfortable in my own skin at that point. Um, and it was so profound. I can't tell you, even I had this bathtub scene and I was very petite and small and it was long hours and they're trying to hoist me up in this bathtub and they had sandbags under me and they're putting Dawn dish detergent to make more bubbles and it's freezing. <laughs> so there was nothing sexy about anything. Everybody, like I said, it was just another day, day at the office and you just walk in, you check in, you put your robe on and you know, you go through the day. But it was a great experience and people don't understand that, you know, once your centerfold comes out, it's so much more than that. I was able to buy a house on my own at 26 years old. I had beautiful cars. I lived a, a pretty great uh, lifestyle that I couldn't have afforded had I not done Playboy. And you show up, you have security every time you show up somewhere and usually they're ex-military and um, which thank you, God bless the USA and thank you to all the that in my <laughs> there i know most of you personally and um you know you get a per diem and you go to the best hotels and you go to the best party and they have the velvet rope there that ropes you off and all you're doing all day long is taking pictures with people or signing a headshot not even your centerfold i didn't see my centerfold pretty much throughout my whole career and until people started writing me asking me for it okay all right very nice so uh being in Playboy, that obviously opens up a lot of doors to other opportunities. So tell us about uh, some of your opportunities uh, in, in film and out, you know, in, in the different uh, avenues you've taken. You know, I, I have seen you in um, the, uh, the band camp movie okay. of American Pie way back when. Uh, so tell us, tell us about some of those things. I call that five minutes of fame. You know, I didn't really want to do those. You know, there is such a thing as the casting couch. I feel like I could have gone really far in this industry, but Playboy was safe. They made a safe environment. It was um, not looked down upon, at least to the people I surrounded myself with and myself. And I was all about making the money. You know, you can get casting calls all day long and to get that call back, you never knew. So yes, I was casted in a couple of movies and my five minutes was there, but that was just not for me. Uh, Wild on E and things like that, I posted things or I did, um, you know, different uh, game shows when I could be myself was really what I loved. I could never really read lines. I didn't like it. I didn't like trying something I wasn't. And uh, that's true mm -hmm. even in my everyday life. Some people like hate it or love it. But to me, it was like, um, that's why they always are like, can you take off your shirt? Yeah, I'll just take off my shirt because if people think I'm hot in the movie, <laughs> they're going to Google me anyways. So keep your lines. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> so is it obviously you, you described the Playboy, um, you know, sense of uh, getting ready, very professional. How does that uh, how does that differ from being on a movie set or, a, you know, a game show set? Yeah, I mean, it's the same thing. I mean, Angelina Jolie has gone topless in movies. I mean, it's just everybody has to maintain their professionalism, no matter if you're an A-lister or B-lister or whatever it is. Um, and I've never, I, I've been around many celebrities, including Bill Cosby and people like that. And I know there's some things that have been said about them and things like that, but I haven't had anything. It's almost like one of those things where, people kind of know what bound like what boundaries they can cross and i think i've always been pretty up up front about what i believe in and who i am and those boundaries were never crossed with me but i know for some women unfortunately absolutely absolutely well you know we're obviously glad you had a a you know a stand up you know stand up people around you and some you know great role models and things like that tell us some of your uh, funniest, you know, I, you've obviously interacted with a lot of celebrities over, over your years. Uh, tell us about some of maybe like some funny stories or some cool people maybe, uh, that you've crossed paths with that, uh, you know, maybe the average person wouldn't get to experience. Well, um, I got into an argument with, I think his name is Matt Castle and, uh, Tom Brady at the Kentucky Derby. And I got in big, big, okay. I got in really big. 
uh, I, uh, I, I'll, I'll, I'll keep that story mainly to myself, but they did take away a couple of my jobs. And I was so angry because, you know, I had a house and a car and they were so angry that I told off Matt Castle and Tom Brady that they took away like three or four of my jobs. And I was like on probation. Oh, my God. Yeah. And, but, you know, well, and that's, the, a, that's another reason not to like Tom Brady. right there. <laughs> Oh, but, you know, I, I, Brady after that and he he's a great guy I know people like love to hate him you know but he's he's a great guy he's a nice guy and he again too is a class act just I think maybe they had a little bit too much to drink and hey maybe it was me too <laughs> you never know <laughs> well that's good though you're standing up for yourself and you know no matter who it is whether it's Tom Brady or whether it's uh just some random dude at the uh the Kentucky Derby you can't let him talk to you uh do you remember what the argument was about or do you want to keep that to yourself? You know, it, I, I'll tell you what it was about. I was dating Adam Archuleta at the time and a lot of people um, were trying to um, really hurt that relationship. They didn't want us to be together. So a lot of people tried to come in between that and make up lies and stories. And I wasn't going to let that happen. <laughs> Jenny okay. from. Good for you for standing up. <laughs> I like it. I like it. We just had a comment on Facebook and said, somebody said, next time, just say you got to buy the book for that story. <laughs> do you, do you, we'll, we'll get into your book here in a minute. Um, so any, any, um, let's, let's move on. We'll come back and you can tell us some more stories here in a minute, but uh, tell us a little bit about your passion for charity and things like that. Obviously I know um you're a, uh, a CASA. I'll let you tell the people what that is and uh, your work with uh, childhelp.org. Can you tell us a little bit about those two things that you're involved with? Yes, I am very passionate about animals, um, elderly people and children only because they're the most vulnerable people. And a lot of times they don't have a voice and I want to be their voice. And this is something that's always been in my heart and something that um, I've advocated for for many years. Child help is really, uh, it's like a one-stop shop. If something happens to a child, they tell their story one time to a facility where there are people there that advocate just for children. For instance, in some states, and I think uh, Ohio is one of them, we didn't have a place where if there was something um, traumatic that happened to a child, they would be shuffled off to a hospital, then they would be shuffled off to the police station, and then, you know, God knows where else. And then they, their story changes. So child help is uh, so important because that child is in the environment where they can tell their story. They could tell it once. We'll get it. And they have all the people there that are used to dealing with children. And so I hold that charity close to my heart because it's so important when you get that story. It has to be one time for that child. And so that, you know, you can um, proceed with whatever investigation you have to do. And uh, CASA is a court special advocate. This was really tricky because they, I had to take a lie detector test. I don't know how many people have ever taken a lie detector test, but even if you're not a liar, it is one of the hardest things to do. <laughs> uh, and you know, um, it is one of those things that is really needed. And basically I've taken the job of DCS where I am the one that is advocating for that child, making sure they have the care that they need, making sure they're in the right school, um, making sure, you know, um, they have food on the table and things like that. So it's dangerous sometimes, but it really fills my heart. I always wanted to adopt. I have three children of my own. Um, I think it, it still may happen, but as of now, I just uh, take on cases and I love group home cases because not only do you get to touch that child, but you get to touch the whole group home. And a lot of times you don't have to deal with the parents, which can be kind of scary um, for somebody like me walking in. Hey, I don't like what's going on here. Um, but, you know, I'll bring pizza for the group homes. I have a, a therapy dog. Uh, he works and he comes to the home and it's it's such a beautiful thing and it's so needed. I have sped up the process with my Casa kid by a year just by listening and saying, no, this is not right. And no, uh, we don't need to wait another month and um, let's just move forward with this. And it's the simple thing that means so much. And everybody's struggling these days. And just think about foster care and um if you're struggling in your own life and you have a good family and you have a whole family, just imagine what's going on out there 
when these kids uh, had nothing to begin with. No doubt. No doubt. Well, that's great. You're doing that. And, uh, you know, the world needs more uh, advocates for for children, especially. Um, OK, so let's talk a little bit about uh, your husband, Adam. Uh, you know, obviously, uh, I reached out to you uh, about getting in touch with him. I'm waiting for CBS to give me the all clear to interview Adam. So hopefully he'll be a guest on the show. But tell us a little bit uh, about you guys, how you met, you know, what he does with CBS and, and that sort of stuff. So Adam, um, it's kind of, Adam is such an amazing guy because he was a walk-on in college. Not very many people know that. He was really small. Uh, people said he wouldn't make it. He would often stand outside uh, his this trainer he went to and begged to come in the gym. Nobody would do that. He would just wait hours upon hours for this guy to just let him in to work out. He really, truly was the underdog that made it. He was a walk-on. He did great. He was a walk-on um, or um, at college, and then he made it to the NFL first uh, first round draft pick. <laughs> Did I say it right? Mm -hmm. yep. he, uh, yeah. No, yeah, yeah. That's great. Football and people hate it, but I don't. I play Madden now. I'm learning a lot by playing Madden, but I know nothing. <laughs> uh, and you know, he made it to the NFL, and he had a great career with the Rams. Um, people don't know this about Adam, but he had a career ending concussion. What could it should have been. He was hit so hard that it, um, he woke up in the hospital and his mom, his own mother said he was not the same after that. Adam continued to play because of his love for the game. But when you are hurt so bad mentally and physically, um, you know, obviously that, that stress is always there. And I remember him just, you know, saying, you know, it used to just be, um, you know, he would just go out there and tackle people and it was just like an instinct. And then he would stop and think about it. And I just get so angry as his wife and somebody who d cares deeply about him when people say he was a bust or things like that. They don't understand that he there was a time where he couldn't tie his own shoes. His coach would have to tie his shoes, you know, because he, he had back injuries so bad. I remember one time um, oh, wow. he showed up for dinner. And I didn't go to the game that day and his hand was broken and I knew it was broken. And I said, oh my gosh, you have to go to the hospital. And he goes, I can't, I have to play tomorrow. And I said, well, you can't play with a hand like that. And he says, if I sit on the bench, then somebody's gonna take my job. And that was always his uh, philosophy. And um, he really probably should have retired with the, the Rams, but he continued on and the Bears and the Redskins and things like that. And I think overall it was a good experience for him, but um, people weren't very kind to him. And I get it. Like you're, you're paying for something and you guys want to see something, but at the end of the day, everybody has their struggles and nobody knows, but I will commend him with two things. He, he's not a pill popper. He never took pills and he never made excuses. And yeah, that's great. And, and like you said, well, no, I'm sorry to cut you off, but like you said, going to from being a walk on to a first round draft pick is pretty impressive. Yeah. And people don't know this, but they changed his positions a couple yeah. and they would do it on a fly where all of a sudden he was a strong safety. Well, you're going to play free safety this week, you know, and I remember he was at the Raiders camp. That was um, he didn't really play for the Raiders, but he went to the camp. And I just remember he was pretty distraught that they had switched his position. I, I wish I could tell you what it was. Maybe when he's on your show, you can ask him, but it was like overnight. They said, nope, you're going to do this tomorrow. And it's just crazy. And uh, now he's a common and a funny because he's a man of a few words. Uh, people used to always think he was full of himself or stuck up and he was always very quiet. And I liked that because I like to be the talker and now he's on TV. So he's always like breaking these stereotypes. You know, he's not a hall of famer. He wasn't a quarterback. You know, how many um, defense guys are commentating? Not very many. Sure, sure. Yeah, absolutely. That shows his his knowledge for the game and love for the game. And uh, he had got a promotion in the offseason. He's working with uh, Greg Gumbel. Uh, obviously, here in Youngstown, it's it's pretty split Brown Steelers. Uh, and I believe he did the Browns Texans game this past weekend. So uh, anybody that was watching, that was uh, Jen's husband, Adam, doing uh, doing the color commentary for that. Do you know where he's at this weekend? Which game he's doing? Uh, yes, I believe it's, um, oops, no, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> I 
<laughs> that's all right. That's all right. That's all right. I'll put you on the spot there. But uh, I'm sure he'll be doing uh, a few Browns games and a few Steelers games uh, this season, being AFC teams working with CBS. So very, very cool. And, and like you said, hopefully we can get him on the show, uh, you know, at some point. So um, very, very cool. So out of maybe his teammates or guys he's played against or, or people you've been around, you know, as a, as a player's wife, uh, obviously you had some issues with Tom Brady who you mentioned, but later on, uh, he's yeah. been, you know, you mentioned he was kind of a cool guy, uh, who, who stands out to you as someone that was, you know, kind of a stand up guy or, or a good friend of Adams that maybe you guys are still friends with, or just may, you know, were, um, just thought was cool over your career and his well, career. I mean, there's a couple of them. Um, uh, gosh, I'm drawing a blank, but the quarterback for the Rams back in the day um, when Adam played, do you remember that? Kurt oh, Warner. Kurt Warner. Kurt Warner. Okay. Love him. I think he's amazing. Amazing family. Does uh, great uh, charitable work around the town and things like that. Marshall Falk, uh, we lived uh, in a high rise. Uh, we were neighbors with Marshall Falk and Adam played with them. And uh, we used to prank Marshall Falk all the time. I'd put rotten pumpkin. <laughs> and we did all kinds of funny things to him and he always thought it was like probably like ex-girlfriends and it was always us um chris hetherington <laughs> um, brian jennings he was a long stabber for the 49ers i mean there's so many um guys that are so so great but i mean those are the ones that stand out to me at this point okay mm -hmm. All right. Very nice. Very nice. Uh, let's get back to uh, you a little bit. And uh, obviously you're in great shape. You know, you, you, you do stuff with, uh, I believe I saw on your website, you do stuff with like working out. Uh, I don't know if you post or blog about that, but uh, tell like, what do you do to stay in such great shape, especially being a mom of three, you know, be, you know, all the different advocacies you do and the jobs you do, how do you stay in such great shape? What do you do for that? Yeah, I mean, it's easy to just grab a grilled cheese when you're making it for the bunch. So, <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know, there's always with kids, there's always stuff that you could eat and, um, you know, make bad choices. But I never sit down. I'm a busy, busy body. So a lot of times my husband would often say, you know, come sit on the couch. Like, you know, I never sit down. Um, I was a ballerina when I was younger. I just think that that conditions your body um, to a point where your core strength is very strong. Um, I just, you know, I, I'm very active, but I'm in a, a place where the weather is so nice, you can be active and you want to be active. Sure. And a lot of it is just, you know, um, just good choices and, you know, doing the right thing and taking care of yourself because I don't care what I look like, but I just want to, I want to be here and I want to have a quality life with my kids and their grandkids. That's like the most important thing for me. And a lot of it's genetics. My one aunt, both my aunts are twins today, and they're turning 61. And if you saw what they oh, look, like, pretty incredible. That's um, uh, Diane and Denise Walcott. <laughs> happy birthday. Okay. Happy birthday. Oh, yeah. Happy birthday to the Walcott twins. Very nice. Very nice. And, uh, you know, I think as, especially as everyone gets older, you know, everyone wants to look good and, you know, and feel healthy but i think as you get a little bit older you work out and you stay healthy to like you said live a good life or a quality of life rather than you know what you naturally might look like on the outside so i think that's a good message for for everybody out there whether you're in okay shape great shape or bad shape you can always work your way up and you know those health benefits are 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 awesome so and it really is and like let's talk Oh, I'm sorry. No, keep going. Keep going. Oh, I say, you know, with my pregnancies, I gained a ton of weight. I was 180 pounds with my first <laughs> and I, I weigh 110 now. And the way I lost that weight was 30 minutes a day, just taking a walk. Like people underestimate just the 30 minutes of just being active and walking or riding a bike. Um, those things really do matter. No doubt. No doubt. Absolutely. Um, all right, let's get into what you're doing now. So you are, you had mentioned to me, and I have no idea the details of it, but you had mentioned you're going to be doing a reality TV show for Bravo. So tell us about that, when it's coming out, what it's about, all the, all the details. Okay, well, I can't, 
I can't tell too many details, unfortunately, because sure. um, for legal issues. But, you know, it's going to be a fun show. It's going to get a look into my life and um, our family's life and to see, you know, just what we do. And um, there's uh, three other families involved and they're pretty interesting. And I think it's going to be great. And it's really about like, I think everybody's tired of the craziness and this is like as normal as it gets. Like it's kind of crazy, but maybe norm is like going to be the new like cool again because everybody's so sick of the chaos. But it's like, for instance, when we were filming, I was making gnocchi in my kitchen, picking up the kids from camp and things like that. And Adam and I were talking about getting a foreign exchange student. It's just like stuff that like normally happens at like, uh, I think would be interesting to people, you know, if they're, especially if they're interested in Adam and um, the other people that are in the, um, the show. And the other thing too, is I just feel like, uh, I don't know. It's just, it, they really liked the guys more than the women, which is pretty funny. Cause usually they like the women and the guys are kind of there in the background, but they really liked these guys. And so they really want the family dynamic. They want the kids the you know the husbands involved and the wives so it's pretty cool and i'm pretty excited okay. in probably january january okay okay and it, and it is going to be on the bravo network is that correct yes and i think they have like a peacock or things like that i don't know how this whole streaming thing goes it's it's a little tricky but um you know we're just waiting the contracts and uh just the green light Okay. All right. Very good. Well, when, once we get some more details, hopefully we'll be able to share that out and uh, maybe you can come back on towards January and, and uh, promote it a little bit. So that would be, that'd be cool. So uh, tell us now too about this book that you're, that you either are writing or have written. Uh, what, what's, the, uh, what's that all about? And uh, when is it coming out? Well, I have a ghostwriter, thank God, because I, I would it would be one right run on sentence. That's all it would be. And that would be, <laughs> my grammar is not not very good right now, especially with the texting and things like that. So I have a ghostwriter, and basically he's just telling my story. Uh, you know, I've been through a lot in my life, just like many people, and uh, the difference with with my life right now that I want to share is I'm actually in a good place. A lot of people that are still going through those those uh, bad times, you know, it's hard to say, okay, well, let me tell you about it because they're still going through it. But I can actually tell you how I got through it, what I did, and why I am where I am now. And I think that's going to speak volumes to women, um, to people that are, um, you know, have been in an abusive relationship, who, who've who been sexually assaulted, who um, have been in trouble, who um, question their parenting, who question their marriage, and things like that. Um, I think it's just going to be an overall great book. And like I said, it's probably not for everybody. Uh, some people might be shocked and some people, um, you know, might know my story, you know, but it's like, there's just so many stereotypes out there about me and um, it followed me throughout my life, even 20 years later. It's incredible just how people can just, uh, just focus on like, like little things and really just try to destroy your life. Well, you know, I think that's fantastic to put yourself out there like that, to to share your story, to be honest about it, you know, and literally, no pun intended, an open book about your life. And that and that's great because again, it feels like you're advocating uh, especially for women. And 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 that's fantastic. Yeah, and it's like beyond the velvet rope because everybody has this idea that if you get you know, the better car, then your life's going to be better. If you, you know, if you are in better shape, your life will be better. The bigger house. And it's like, once you get beyond the velvet rope, which I've been, it's not much different. And if anything, it's a little worse. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, with that comes a lot of expectations and pressure. And, you know, I'm sure I'm sure you've been through and seen it all. And uh, I think sometimes when the spotlight is on you, uh, that, you know, you're, you're out there for criticism and, you know, gossip and things like that, like you had mentioned. So I, I'm sure that has followed you both good and bad. Oh yeah. And I mean, you know, when you're in the, you know, the limelight, you're going to, 
you know, uh, get a lot of that. And I, I, I've taken it and now I'm trying to use my platform to help other people like through CASA and child help and, um, different animal organizations and, and things like that. And just try to be a cheerleader and you're not going to touch everybody, but maybe if you just touch that one person, that's all that matters at the end of the day. No doubt. No doubt. That's, that's fantastic. And, uh, you know, do you have any idea when that might come out? So we're pretty much done with the draft. And so I was hoping it would come out, you know, with the show. And then that way, you know, it could be like, boom, <laughs> I've been working on all yeah, this right. stuff for a while. Um, but yeah, so, you know, um, I'm hoping January too. So hopefully like 2022 is going to be a great year uh, for me as well as for everybody else. Absolutely. We're looking forward to all your work that's coming out. And, uh, you know, we, we really, really uh, appreciate all you do. And you're a, uh, a wonderful role model from Youngstown. So we're proud to claim you as, uh, as one of our own. So, uh, so let's, let's talk about uh, one, other, uh, one other person in your, you know, that, that you're obviously related to. I uh, graduated with. So let me let me just ask you real quick. What's your um, relationship with Jesse, your cousin? Uh, Jesse is I won't say one of my favorite cousins, but she's a cousin I talk to a lot because <laughs> we have many cousins. These Walcotts, it's it's there's like over almost forty I think now. But um, Jessica and I wow. we have a great relationship. You know, when you live far away, it's hard to stay in touch and to have that, um, that closeness. And for whatever reason, we've had it, we've always had it. And I would do anything and everything for her. And um, we're very much alike. And I think she's a wonderful person. And I think she's um, going through a really hard time right now. But, you know, God doesn't give you anything you can't handle. And I feel like she is stronger than ever. She's uh, the most positive person that I've talked to in a long time with everything going on in this world, with everything she has going on. And she's such a great mom and great friend and great cousin. And uh, I'm just really proud of her. That's awesome. Yeah, she is. She is honestly one of the nicest people I've ever met. Uh, I'm going to show a little video here in a minute uh, about her uh, that's going and we're actually going to have her on the show next Tuesday to uh, kind of promote her cause and what she's going through right now. But uh, Jen, I just want to thank you for taking the time out of your busy day. We all know, uh, you know, I read, you know, everything that you you are doing and, uh, you know, for you to take the time out of your day. We appreciate it. Hopefully we can talk to Adam soon and hopefully we can have you back on the show to uh, promote your book and promote your show. And uh, again, thank you so much for joining us. Yes. Can I say one thing before I go? Please. Absolutely. Just in closing, I wanted to say, you know, like, like I said, you, you won't touch everybody, but if you touch one person, I just want to leave everybody with this, that this is really hard times for everybody. And, um, faith, whatever that looks like to you, hold on to that. And good old fashioned common sense never hurt anybody. So a little bit of faith and common sense goes a long way. And God bless. Thank you so much. And uh, it was great talking to you. Great actually like seeing you in person. And uh, you have an open invite. Hopefully, uh, do you ever make it back to Youngstown? I do. I, I try to come once a year. The kids are in school now, so it gets crazy, but at least once a year and usually it's in the summer. So, um, yeah, I would love to. Okay. Pop All right. Absolutely. Well, we look forward to talking to you again soon. And uh, thanks again so much for taking your time out of your day. Appreciate you. Thank you. Bye bye. Have a great day. All right, we are uh, we're now going to talk uh, or I'm going to show you a video uh, from Jen's cousin, Jesse, about uh, what she's going through. Uh, we're doing our NFL pickums right now, and uh, this is my charity organization that I picked. So this is uh, Jessica Walcott Krauser, and uh, we're going to show you a little video right now uh, about what she's going through. I heard you say the words, bring the juice. What does bring the juice mean? Bring the juice is actually something that my husband introduced me to. It's a mantra by Urban Meyer. 
where he says energy equals production. I don't want to be around energy takers. I want to be around energy givers. What that really means for me is that I need to surround myself with energy givers, like my family and friends, those that support me. And I need to alleviate stress by staying away from energy takers. It also means I need to be an energy giver to others, like my Parkinson's community, because there's no room for energy takers there. So tell me, what is the symptom that constantly bothers you? Well, my right side is what is affected the most right now. So in the beginning, I was challenged with things like typing, writing, putting my foot on the gas pedal and the brake, even brushing my teeth, just normal everyday tasks. But I'm used to all of that now. My current challenge is more cognitive, like multitasking. As a marketer, a wife and a mother, that's a hard thing to accept. So I made hard choices like pulling back on my career, being okay with messes around the house and to just live in the moment. I realized I can still do great things. I just have to focus on one thing at a time and I'm okay with that. I wanted to share that video with you guys. Uh, she is such an awesome person. I'm going to actually do an interview with her tomorrow. Uh, that's going to air for our, uh, Tuesday show. So uh, you'll learn more about our cause. Um, they have a 5K coming up uh, in Columbus uh, next Sunday, a week from this Sunday. And, uh, you know, I'll have I'll have Jess uh, tell you about that. And, you know, if you're not able to go different ways, you can contribute to the cause. So I do want to uh, uh, talk a little sports today. Uh, and, you know, again, thank Thank to uh, thank you to Jen who is uh, was gracious for coming on. But let's get into our normal, uh, you know, Thursday show. We we always have a Thursday thoughts. We do our, our Browns talk, our, our Buckeyes talk, uh, and our high school football stuff. So we're gonna get right now into the Cleveland Browns, and I, I just want to give you my thoughts and expectations. And Joe, feel free to jump in yeah. uh, on this. So the Browns this weekend. The Browns are taking on the Chicago Bears. The Chicago Bears are breaking in Justin Fields. So, this should be so cool. So, to watch. It really you know, will. <laughs> this is one of those things is like, I will root for Justin Fields every single game except for Sunday. You know what I mean? <laughs> so I am wishing him a great career, a great season, just not this week, you know? So it's weird when one of your favorite players, and Justin Fields is one of my favorite all time Buckeyes probably the best quarterback Ohio State has ever had. And now he's the enemy on the opposite, you know, side of things. So it's a little weird, but, uh, but you know, it's kind of like you want him to do well, but maybe in like mop up duty, you know, when the Browns already have a comfortable lead. So I think the Browns right now, the line started at around six and a half. I think it might be up to seven and a half now, but, um, but the Browns are, a clear favorite in this game, but I think this could be a close game. So how, how, do you, how did Justin do in preseason? Did he, how so, did he look? well, actually, um, preseason, he looked pretty good preseason. He looked pretty good. And then Andy Dalton last week goes out and I don't know if it was a knee or a hip or what, it, what it was, but he, he goes out, Justin Fields comes in and, uh, you know, they held on to beat the Bengals last week, but Fields didn't have to do much. He had, you know, 30 yards rushing and like 60 yards passing. So, he was able to not lose the game for right. them, I guess you could say. Uh, and Joe Burrow didn't help, you know, because he sort of threw three picks for the Bengals, where, which so the Bears defense, you know, has some dudes on it. it, right. it they have some legit dudes. Uh, so that's going to be something to watch out for. Uh, but big news for the Browns. It looks like uh, it looks like Odell Beckham will play. I don't this believe he's weekend. On this game. I don't so, believe, I haven't seen him in so long. I don't think he's there until really yeah, until he actually takes the field and you know, we don't just hear the hype. You know, it's hard to believe, but I really really do think this is the week he gets back into things and from all accounts he looks great at practice, but practice and against air versus, you know, game versus legit NFL defenders 
is a different beast. So, and he was a distraction the first year for Baker Mayfield. He was to become that distraction again. That first year, though, that was the Freddie Kitchens year. That yes. was the year with all the hype and expectations. Everyone was bad that year. They, yeah, I almost <laughs> didn't like just, just you know, take that. And we'll do one of these. Here. Just, you know, I'll give you a visual. You just take that and God. get it out of here. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, uh, you know, that year's gone last year was, was weird because, you know, you're again, a new coach, new system, no off season, stuff like that. So it's a weird situation. He did make a few big plays last year, obviously the ACL injury. And then the Browns team really kind of took off after the injury, which made a lot of people think, is it because of Odell? Is it, you know, so what was it? So in my opinion, I think it just, it was a, like a wrong place. You know, it was just like a bad timing of the injury. Right. So it almost made him look worse because the offense started to do well. But uh, I want to give, you know, a, a shout out to the Browns offensive line because they are what makes this team go. You can say Nick Chubb, you can say Jarvis Landry, who, by the way, will miss probably in the next three games. But uh, you can say Kareem Hunt, you can say Odell, whoever it might be, the tight ends. But this offensive line, J.C. Treader, Wyatt Teller, Joel Batonio, Jack Conklin, and Jedrick Wills, who is a little bit banged up right now. But those four or five guys are what make this team go. They can pound the rock. They can pound the rock. They can give Baker Mayfield time to throw. They can get those wide receivers time to get open. And they are what make this team go. So um, I really think going forward, whether, you know, the Browns are without Landry, without Beckham, without whoever, this offensive line is what this is the heart and soul of this team, you know, and Baker, it's going to be interesting to see with him too, because he's, he ha injured that, that left shoulder. Right. And, uh, you know, by all accounts, it's just a, a bruise or, you know, just, you know, I, I don't even know what to call it, but basically nothing structurally damaged. So that, that's just a sigh sore. of relief. Yes. And the dude's an animal as far as working through pain. That's for sure. Exactly. Exactly. And, uh, you know, so, so hopefully Baker Baker Mayfield right now leads the NFL in completion percentage. It's something Who like 81%. Thought, yeah, like 40. It's like he's like 40 of 49 or 41 of 49 on the season. So he so looks I got, good. I got a question for you. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, the NFL was almost like committed to be a passing league, right? The yes. run game is just non-existent until you get two running backs like Chubb mm -hmm. and Kareem Hunt. Right. Now, do you think any other teams decide to like swap out of those explosive deep threat offenses and maybe some other teams start messing around with some running backs again? Well, the team I'm going to I'm going to say back to that is the Las Vegas Raiders. They play what's called, and, and the Browns do this too, they play a lot of what's called 13 personnel, which your first number is how many running backs you have, and the second number is how many tight ends you have. So 13 personnel would be one running back, three tight ends. So the Browns do that a lot. So the Browns and the um, Vikings do this a lot, and all those teams have great running games, but also can open up the passing game because of that running game. Right. So I think the NFL, like you said, is an air raid, you know, that we're going a lot of five wide, four wide, whatever it might be. And yeah, the passing yards are up. And I don't think that's going away because you win by passing. But you also, you know, there's the adage you you win the game in the fourth quarter by running the ball, controlling the clock and playing defense. So I'm with you on that. And I think the Browns are a little bit more old school in that sense uh and the more they can hold on to that ball and that's one thing they have to do more because sure. chubbs fumbled uh mayfield through has thrown two picks and uh the punter jamie gillen has fumbled so that's i think they've had 17 possessions and four fumbles in two games so that's almost 25 percent. you can't do that no. um versus good teams and obviously that cost them against the chiefs they're just way better than the Texans. So that didn't cost them last week. Well, I'll but... tell you that one thing that we, we talked about preseason was mm -hmm. they didn't put any of their starters in and they were going to be rusty. And this yes. is the kind of shit that they would have worked through their system in preseason games, not during the season. Exactly. Yeah. I, I am an advocate for playing a, like maybe play those guys, guys one 
one game together. You can see that on the defensive side of the ball. They are not a uh, not cohesive right now. They have a lot of great players, but they are not cohesive. Uh, the defense, like Garrett has one sack right now through two games, which, you know, he's going to get double team and chipped and whatever, but he has to pick it up for the Browns to be a legit team. Well, and people argued, like if you add Clowney in there, then you take the pressure off of, mm -hmm. uh, of what's his name to, to be able to get in there. And both of them were ineffective last week. Right. I mean, well, they were getting hung up every play. Exactly. And I think, uh, I think the defensive line, they'll make strides this year. I think they really will. Uh, but again it's it's about that like cohesion it's about that chemistry and and whatnot and i really think these guys are going to make some noise and you're playing a rookie quarterback this week this might just be the week to do it you know hopefully justin fields gets through this game healthy <laughs> he's mobile but, guys but, he's uh, mobile <laughs> but but hopefully we're able to uh to sack him you know and... that has been a weakness over the last couple of years is you get a mobile quarterback yeah and you give him time mm -hmm. and he will rip you apart well look at tyrod taylor what he uh, did yes he, tyrod sure. taylor when he was healthy did did a pretty good job against the browns uh and and mahomes obviously we know what he does he does it every week so yeah. um so yeah, we'll see what happens this week. I do expect the Browns to cover the spread. We'll talk about our pick 'em picks here in a minute. Uh, just a couple other real quick notes. Uh, last week, or I'm sorry, through two weeks in the NFL season, Pro Football Focus has Baker Mayfield, and these are just AFC North quarterbacks. So Baker Mayfield is the number one ranked uh, AFC North quarterback at 16 overall. Lamar Jackson is the second one he is rated 20th overall through two weeks joe burrow is number 21 overall which means ben roethlisberger and listen to this he is 32nd overall ranked by pro football focus in the nfl i don't away. even know if he's going to play this weekend yeah. i'm not sure i know tj watt is is questionable i believe roethlisberger is questionable uh deontay johnson one of their good receivers is questionable so put a fork in them they i I think the Steelers are still pretty good, though. I, I really do. <laughs> I think they're a 10-win team. Uh, but, you know, one guy can make a difference. So if they lose TJ Watt for any given time, or if they have to bring in Haskins, or uh, what's the guy with the most punchable face, Mason Rudolph, <laughs> and <laughs> then they are in trouble. Then they are in trouble. Um, <laughs> one other Browns note I want to I want to say before we move on to our pick'ems. Um, the Browns this weekend will induct Josh Cribs, Dequel Jackson, Bill uh, Nelson, and Webster Slaughter. So Ooh. three or four familiar names. I don't really know Bill Nelson all that well, but uh, to their legends list, so they have like an alumni, kind of like a homecoming game every uh, every year. And this, those are the four guys that I are getting inducted. I can't believe Webster's not in it already. And that's that is surprising. Yeah. That is surprising. So Webster Slaughter. Uh, I would rank up probably in my top five favorite Browns of all time. Totally, uh, I'll, I'll have to think about my list, but you got to have Bernie in there. You got to have Eric Metcalf for me in there. He was one of my favorites. I'll, I'll Biner have Mac think. have to be there. Yeah, Biner Mac are so good. I was more, I, when I was younger, I, I always, uh, for whatever reason, loved defense more so. So I always love Frank Minifield oh, yeah. and, and Hanford Dixon too. Yes, so those favorite. are two of my favorite favorite dudes so joe i'm gonna put up um this next picture excuse me my voice there but uh this next picture is our nfl pick'em charities joe is playing for akron children's hospital we have ellie platt playing for the trumbull county farm bureau we have isaac schuster playing for the molina michelle enfield foundation we have uh luke playing for and i i hope i get the pronunciation right i believe it's rosalie's forever footprints uh my mom is playing in this pickup. She is the founder of Project MKC, so she might as well make a little money might if she as can well. for the organization. She's playing for Project MKC. Uh, Lisa Resnick, who can't just pick one charity <laughs> like the rules we said, but she's playing for Oh Wow, an animal charity. She's on the board of both. It's hard to blame her. Uh, we have Northeast Ohio Flag Football playing for the Rotary Foundation of Canfield. Uh, the Youngstown Pizza Project, uh, Grace and... Um, Jeremy, they have that coming up in the near future. Uh, we'll all have them tell you what the Youngstown Pizza Project is, but I believe it's a new 501c3 they're going to be using. And by and, the way, uh, Scott Ryan said Bill Nelson is a quarterback from the 50s. Oh, okay. All right. Before so, my time. Before my, a little bit before our time. Um, and then the final charity, we showed that video uh, of Jess, uh, the 5K for JK. That is who I am playing for. Uh, 
So I'm going to put up our pick em picks here next on screen. And I don't expect everyone to go through this, but uh, basically the big takeaway is eight out of the 10 of us are picking the 49, or I'm sorry, the Packers to, uh, you know, they are the underdog. The 49ers are uh, laying three and a half. So eight of the 10 of us have the Packers over the 49ers. Me. Not Joe though, nope. not Joe and Lisa. Nope. Aaron, um, Aaron Rodgers is doing crack. That's why. <laughs> <laughs> I think this is very interesting, though. If you look at the Bengals, Steelers, and Ravens Lions game, we are split five five on okay. each of them. So that's pretty cool. Uh, we'll we'll update these picks on Tuesday and show you how we did. Uh, the Chargers and Chiefs. The only person on the Chargers is Neo Flag Football. That is, uh, uh, that is why is his name escaping me? <laughs> ben Figley. Ben Figley is uh, picking for NEO flag football. So he is the only one on the Chargers. And then we have three people on the Bears, Lisa, Isaac, and Jeremy. And the Traders. rest of us have Traders the Browns. All. But the good thing for us, and by the way, some people might say, well, how'd you get the Browns at six and a half? These lines, I send out a group message to these guys on Tuesday, and I'm like, give me your picks by Wednesday so I can put this graphic together and put it on the show. Did we for get Thursday. the better line. So, are you so keeping we got it? the better. Well, yes. well, yeah, we did because the Browns are now a seven and a half point favorite. So now the Browns just have to win by a touchdown. They don't have to get that extra that uh, but they, win by But eight. they will anyway. So, they yeah. got this in the bag. I think the, I think the Bears are going to be tough, but I, I do think the Browns, uh, I do think the Browns cover. So that is, uh, that's our picks for this week. One more time, I just want to show you who we're picking for. So again, uh, I'm playing for 5K for JK. Joe is playing for Akron Children's. Lisa for Animal Charity and Oh Wow doesn't follow the rules. Luke playing for <laughs> Rosalie's Forever Footprints. Isaac, Michelle, uh, Molina, Edenfield Foundation. Youngstown Pizza Project, Jeremy and Gracie. Uh, Jenny is playing for Project MKC. Neo Flag Football for Canfield Rotary and Ellie for the Farm Bureau of Trumbull County. So. Lots of good stuff for a good cause. We're going to do this each and every week. Uh, and we're going to be able to give at least, as of now, $600 to charity. I'd like to give a quick shout out to South Range Girls Basketball. They are donating $50 to this. And uh, uh, someone that wanted to remain anonymous is going to donate another $50. So Sweet. $600 to a charity. We will um, make sure we get that out to everybody. So. Before we close the show, we got about five minutes left. I want to get you into my Ohio State thoughts for the weekend. So uh, Ohio State, very interesting news that just came down. Uh, they will not be starting C.J. Stroud at quarterback. He has an injured shoulder. They're going to rest him this week against the Akron Zips. Uh, Akron, <laughs> as we all know, is not a very, very good team. I think Ohio State might be favored by around 50 points. 50 this so, year, 50 points. Yeah. Like by, this so, team, like, like seven touchdowns, like, like this wow. 2021, um, it, it, Ohio state is going to struggle at times defensively. We've seen that, but, um, I'm actually going to the game on Saturday. I'm kind of looking forward to it. It's my first game in two years. Obviously last year I wasn't able to go. So it's a night game at the horseshoe. Those are always special, whether it's a, an, an awesome team or, you know, a team that might struggle like Akron. So either way, it's a great experience. A night game at the horseshoe. If you've never done it, highly recommend it. Are, can we still be friends if I tell you I'm taking the zips with the points? You can go for it. Go. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's fine. I, I don't know the official line, but I, I heard it was seven touchdowns. So um, for, it's hard to lay 49 points, but uh, yeah. But we'll 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 see how that goes. Um, so I think this is a field. They're not Tulsa, of course. Not Tulsa. 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 I'm telling you what. By the end of the year, Tulsa is going to be. They're they're going to have a decent record. They're going to get into a bowl game, and I think they're going to win that bowl game because Tulsa is not a bad team. They're not a bad team. Minnesota, not a bad team. Oregon's the number three team in the country too right now. This Ohio State team is extremely, extremely young. They are playing. Their quarterbacks are all freshmen, all freshmen. Um, they're starting running back now. Travion Henderson just broke the all time uh, rushing record at Ohio State by a freshman that, you know, their receivers and O line have some uh, experience, but their defense, they're playing all these young guys. And why not go to a youth movement? If it ain't working with the old guys, put in the young guys, see if they can make some, uh, some, uh, some hay because. This is the most highly touted Ohio and Ohio state recruits with the best of them each and every year. But this is the most highly touted, uh, 
class Ohio State has ever recruited, this 2021 class. And you're going to see guys like JT Tuomolo, Jack Sawyer, uh, Denzel Burke. These are just names I'm saying that are already playing a little bit that are going to make some some noise. Cam Martinez is a safety. You're going to hear a lot of big-time uh, NFL names coming out of this 2021 class. Can I tell you what I hate, though, about mm -hmm. this, though? You have so many people, so many young people on like one side of the ball, like defense, that mm -hmm. when they get into the season where they're going to the NFL, you're going to sure. lose a whole group at the same time. That's a good point, but a team like Ohio State usually doesn't have to worry about that because – they're so loaded at every single position that it's plug and play. Okay. And you can usually, you know, work some of those younger guys in to work with some of the veterans. And they, I think last year, the pandemic year really was a hindrance to a team like Ohio state who only played what five regular season games. So those guys that normally get to play against teams like Akron didn't get to play last year because they were all big 10 games. And then, I mean, they freaking got to the national championship game. <laughs> so every game mattered. But uh, Joe, I have a question for you sure. before we end on uh, on Ohio State. Do you know the last team from the state of Ohio to beat Ohio State? Last team from Ohio yes. to beat Ohio State. It was a big enough school to beat Ohio State. Uh, how long ago was it? This was a hundred years ago. Oh shit! I didn't <laughs> know that. Come on. I will say this school is known for its music. Uh, music. They are not known for football. Okay. They are up a little bit west of Cleveland. Oh, I don't know. I don't know uh, what's up that way. So it is the Oberlin College, and I think it's Yeomen, Y-E-O. Nobody -E knows that it's her. <laughs> the Oberlin College, Yeomen, were the last team to wow. beat Ohio State in 1921, 7-6. to six. Dang. Ohio State took a 6 nothing lead. Oberlin scored a touchdown. Won the game seven to six. If you look at some of the schools Ohio State used to play, you know, and all of these colleges used to play way back when, there were teams like like YMCA would would like put together a like a, a football team like the Westerville YMCA, <laughs> and like until like all, all these actual colleges. Wait, you know what? Starting... Oberlin, when you walk in that hallway in the in the trophy case, guess what it is? Exactly that game. Oberlin can always hang its hat on say <laughs> we beat Ohio State, and they can say hey we beat Ohio State in twenty one. They don't, they don't no, mean no. 2021. <laughs> They're talking 1921. So that's just kind of a cool fact. I, I thought I'd throw that out there. So proud graduates of Oberlin College can always share that. Um, just real quick uh, update on the best matchups of the weekend. You got Arkansas, Texas A&M, Wisconsin, Notre Dame, West Virginia, Oklahoma. Those will be uh, really good games coming up this weekend. Uh, and real quick, Steve Leslie was not able to join us on the show this week, but he uh, was able to shoot me some of uh, his notes. So the undefeated high school teams through week five, Garrettsville, Garfield, G-Men, the South Range Raiders, the West Branch Warriors, and the Hubbard Eagles are the uh, five, or I'm sorry, four undefeated teams uh, in our valley through week four. I also want to give a shout out to these uh, these best performances, individual performances of week five, Devin Sherwood of Austintown Fitch, TC Caffey, who you're going to hear a lot about uh, from Hubbard. He uh, rushed for 244 yards and four touchdowns. Demarcus McElroy from uh, Youngstown Ursula, 146 rushing yards, five touchdowns, which tied the school re record. I'm not sure if that's held by Ed O'Neill, Al Bundy. Uh, it, might, it very well might be because he always talked about it on Married with Children and how he uh, set the high school school record, but he was a great player for Youngstown Ursula. Uh, also, Brock Lowry for Canfield, three touchdown passing, uh, two rushing. Jack Fulton from Poland, 273 total yards last week, five touchdowns. And Brady Shannon, also of Ursuline High School, 344 passing yards, one touchdown. He is now the number two all-time passer in Ursuline School history with 4,258 yards entering this week. And finally, Steve's top five matchups for week six. You have the Maslin Washington Tigers uh, at Austintown Fitch this weekend. You have uh, the Boardman Spartans at Cleveland Benedictine. The Gerard, Joe's Gerard, uh, what are the, what's Gerard? Indians. Indians. Yeah. Ger I always think of the G and I the think Gerard Bulldogs. Football. Yeah. The Gerard football team. <laughs> yeah. So to the Gerard Indians taking on the South Range Raiders, South Range, a loaded team, uh, five and oh, uh, Mogador 
is playing at Warren JFK. Springfield is taking on McDonald's. So those are uh, Steve's top five games. You can check those out on YSNlive.com. They always uh, help us out and share great information with us. So appreciate uh, Steve and DJ over at YSN. Um, yeah. Hey, uh, one more thing. One more thing. Because I, I know I know the next show is starting at 5 o'clock. But I got to get this one thing in. So I I don't know if you subscribe to HBO max okay so and and you're so damn busy you don't probably even sit down and watch tv or movies but i gotta tell you this it's coming up on spooky season halloween a little bit here so last night i sat down and i watched a it's actually in theaters right now it's called malignant so it's on hbo max it's streaming so it's it's one of those movies they probably paid a lot of money for because it's it's streaming and in movie theaters I have to say, this was the worst movie <laughs> I have seen in a very long time. Malignant on HBO. I am normally one that's very, I'm a, I'm not a harsh critic. But this might have had, now the lead actress, she was in Peaky Blinders. She's very nice to look at. She's a good actress. But the rest of the actors and actresses in this movie, all garbage. <laughs> all garbage not, not good acting. very bad very very bad for a while i like sort of laughed at it and i said is this supposed to be stupid uh there are some unique premises in this movie that's all i'll say i don't want to give away any spoilers but i will just say if you like horror movies you might want to watch it it wasn't too scary but it was really poorly done in my opinion was it like a slasher so, movie like a uh, there was bloody... some, I, I, yeah and i'm not a gore guy i don't like that stuff i'm more of like the psychological thrillers mi- mystery type stuff but uh I, I this movie you know wasted about two hours of my life last night so i figured i'd give it a two minute blip on the show and say how bad it was so there you go there's, there's my I, I mentally wrote it down thinking you were gonna say i approve of this movie and oh, now God, i have no. to mentally oh, no. strike mentally it off strike that i All do right. not want to waste anyone's time <laughs> but if you like it hey what like i looked at the rotten tomato score 76 percent. that's pretty damn good that is good yeah so maybe it's just me but I, the movie shit sorry you're, you're, you're culturally <laughs> inept that's what it is we are going to do sometime in october a horror movie draft just for fun uh that will not make my list. No. I can tell you right now. That is on the do not draft <laughs> list. So I uh, appreciate you guys all listening. Thank you to uh, to Jen Archuleta. She's a great guest. I hope to have her back on. Uh, and we will talk to her cousin, Jess Archuleta, or Jess Archuleta, Jess Walcott Krauser, uh, doing for her 5K. So please check out her 5K for JK. And uh, appreciate you guys all listening. Everyone have a great weekend. Go Browns. Go Buckeyes. We will see you next week. Thank you for listening to this show on Youngstown Studio. If you like our programming, we invite you to subscribe to our YouTube channel, follow our Facebook page, or subscribe to your favorite podcast platform like iTunes or Spotify. This is original Youngstown content, and we would appreciate you sharing the videos and the word about us. Thank you.